All right, so what we want to do is we want to look at what's called um, an elastic collision. And elastic collisions are um, where the particles come together and they bounce off and no energy is lost to deformation. The particles maintain their shape um, and they bounce. Um, billiard balls is a, is a classic example of this. And we see this in nuclear um, in isotopic physics. And so our key is when two things coming together, they don't lose energy due to deformation. So both energy and momentum is conserved. So what I'll do is I'll have particle mass A, particle mass B collide at the given velocities. What we're going to do is we're going to track their um, momentum and some and energy. So momentum momentum is conserved. So we'll write the initial momentum for the system. Right? Because this is the initial momentum. And then we'll write the final momentum of the system where we're going to prime the velocities. And one of the things we should note intuitively if we look at this system is that the objects will come in in one direction but they're going to bounce and leave in the opposite direction um, which we can see by our drawing and so we have the initial momentum is the mass times the velocity coming in and the um, final momentum is the mass times the velocity coming out and since momentum is conserved we'll set these equal to each other actually let me bring this down here Whoops bring this down here. This will be our first equation, the conservation of momentum. But I also said the energy was going to be conserved in the system because we are not losing energy in the collision. These are not changing shape, which requires energy. I'm just copying down my momentum equation here. We'll make this equation one. Let's make it, so let's look at the energy considerations. So the kinetic energy of particle A coming in is V A squared, and particle B is one half M V B squared. Remember these are vectors. And the final gets the same equation, but we're gonna have prime velocities. And prime is just what I'm gonna use right now to distinguish before the beginning and the end. But notice, each term has a one-half in it. So when I set these equal to each other, I can divide that one-half out. And so I'm going to bring this down here. And, right, because if this is equal to this, and they each have a term of one-half, those one-halves cancel across the board. And we'll write this down here. So our system has a conservation of momentum and a conservation of energy. Keeping our primes as the final state of our system, we get a system of two equations here. And these are the two equations we want to manipulate to give us some information about what's happening to our system. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to bring the uh, focus on the energy side of this for a second. I'm going to bring the A's together. And I'm going to bring the B's together. I'm going to pull the negative sign out of this. I might change that negative sign as I progress. We'll see what we need to do with it here. All right. So I, I subtracted this from both sides to get this equation. And I subtracted this from both sides to get this equation. I pulled the negative sign out so that my primes are my second term. Well, this is a difference of squares. So this would be MA VA plus MA VA prime times M A 
oops, M M A V A minus M A V A prime. And this would be the negative of the same thing, but with B. And so we have a, a, our difference of squ squares equation here that separates these out for us. All right. And so if we look over here, all of these have an MA. So I'll pull the MA out over here. And all of these have an MB. So I'll pull the MB out here. And now we have we have manipulated equation two so that we at least have linear terms um, for our velocities uh, or linear factors I should say for for our velocities. All right, so let's arrange equation one in the same way. So we'll make this two star, and so what we do here now is we'll arrange equation one so that we have our primes, all our a's on one side, and all of our b's on the other. And so this would be one star. And now what we can do here is we can divide these two equations. In fact, we'll divide equation two by equation one, star. Okay. So we'll do the proportion of these two. So we'll take M A V A plus V A prime V A minus V A prime. Uh, we do, and we'll pull out M A's from this over here also. Minus M B V B plus V B. Remember, this is a system. All these things are happening at once, so we can blend these equations. Whatever an equation is, is a number. And so we'll put these together. And we'll divide this side. We'll pull out negative MB. Oops, from here, we'll pull out. We pull down negative, we'll pull out the MB. And we'll get VB minus VB prime. Well, that's nice. Because, oops, control Z. We pull out a negative, that's a negative. What am I looking at here? Oh, this should be a negative. This should be a negative. My bad, right? That's equation one. Equation one's down here. This is correct. Those cancel, and those cancel. The masses cancel. And what we end up with is the velocity in A plus the velocity in A prime is equal to the velocity in B plus the velocity in B prime. Well, what really is this say? Well, what we can do is we'll bring back the initial conditions. So do VA minus VB, and then I'll bring over the negative conditions. So subtract A. And we'll get VA minus VB prime, or VB primed, right? So we subtract the initial, VA minus VB, and I'm going to subtract VA. And these are the relative velocities. So if I have two particles moving, and let's say this is moving 5 meters per second, and this is move um, towards this, and this is moving 20 meters per second. The relative velocity is 15 meters per second, right? It's 20 in this direction and in this direction. When they collide, this says that the 
relative velocity, I don't know how much is in one particle or the other, the overall relative velocity will be 15 meters per second in the opposite direction. The relative velocity will stay the same but change direction. And so the relative velocities are, we could think of as being conserved in the momentum. Now how much goes to each particle depends on the masses of each particle. And so this is what an elastic collision looks like.